That's a beautiful eggplant cutlet. This is going in my sandwich. For those of you that don't know, I'm a retired professional sandwich maker. Used to run an old food truck specializing in grilled cheese sandwiches that I must say were pretty good. So naturally I take the craft of making sandwiches pretty seriously. And that's why last episode we spent the entire episode learning how to make beautiful homemade marinated roasted peppers so that we could then take this episode to craft this perfect killer fried eggplant cutlet sandwich. You know I think ingredients are vital and right now eggplants are all over the farmer's markets. So it's the perfect time to make a sandwich like this. And if you've ever had a sandwich made with thin fried eggplant cutlets, you'll realize you'll never miss the meat. It's gonna taste pretty much like a chicken cutlet. So this is a sandwich for vegetarians and meat eaters alike. It's absolutely delicious. We've made the cutlets before in our eggplant parmesan video and I'll leave a link down below. So let's just jump right into breading and frying these guys. Once all the eggplant is sliced, add it to a colander over a small bowl and then lightly salt the eggplant and put something heavy on top. That's gonna pull a lot of that moisture out, which we wanna do before we fry these eggplants. Now let that sit for about 30 minutes. When I'm making sandwiches that I'm trying to make on a little bit on the healthier side, instead of using any sort of mayo-based sauce or something like that, I like to make a really creamy vinaigrette, something that kind of is thick and kind of almost acts like a sauce, but it's gonna bring a lot of flavor. And for a sandwich like this, I plan on adding, along with the fried eggplant and the roasted peppers, some arugula, some burrata. So to me, a nice balsamic vinaigrette is gonna go really nicely with this. But we haven't gone over a vinaigrette in a while and I wanna show you a really easy way of how to make it. A vinaigrette to me is, at minimum, always made up of four things. It's a vinegar or an acid, so vinegars or citruses, something like that, that has acidity. One part of the acid to one or two parts fat or oil. And in this case, it's we're gonna use olive oil. Some people like one to three acid to oil. I like mine acidic and uh, punchy. So you can dial it in the way you want. So what we're just gonna do is we're gonna fill up a container, about one part. At this point, it really doesn't matter how much we put in. We just know we're gonna put about an equal amount or double the fat. So you can just use your eyes and bend down. So you should be able to see the vinegar at the bottom. I'd say it's like, one part vinegar to one and one half fat. So that's a good balance for me, I'm gonna go with it. Next thing we're gonna add is about anywhere from a half a tablespoon to a tablespoon of a Dijon mustard, which is gonna be that thing that makes it creamy. So eyeballing, I don't know, maybe that's a teaspoon, maybe it's a half tablespoon. I can always adjust something like this. And then we're gonna have the sweetener, which we're gonna use maple syrup and about an equal part of that and the mustard. That's gonna all create some balance, which is what we're going for in a vinaigrette. I want it acidic and punchy, but I, I want it to be like a smooth sort of punchy. Those are really the four essential ingredients and always salt, and for this, a little black pepper. Now I think that's gonna be perfect. All I gotta do, put a lid on, and then shake like crazy for, it's gonna come together in seconds. Hold this real tight. Coats my finger, that's what you want. Perfect. So it looks like this eggplant has sweat out most of its moisture, so they're ready to be breaded. Just give them a quick little dry. There's a little water leached out. So I've got my basic breading station here. You've seen this set up before. I've got some flour, a few eggs, and my panko and my breadcrumb blend here. I'm just gonna season everything. I'm gonna glove up, because I'm working with the cameras. What we're gonna do is we're gonna have, try and have one dry hand, one wet hand, 
into the flour, into the egg, into the breadcrumbs, and we're gonna work that breadcrumb into the thing. Now the key with breading anything is when you're in the actual breading stage, like you see here, to avoid any sort of wet spots. Any wet spots that you see, make sure you re-coat in breadcrumbs and then make sure one layer of the breadcrumbs is kind of hydrated and then another over top is sort of dried. That's gonna allow you to get nice crispy cutlets. And shaking it like this is a great way to kind of use up the last bits of the breadcrumbs in an efficient way. Look at how many cutlets you get with one eggplant. Now I'm just gonna pop this in the refrigerator. It's always good to kind of refrigerate cutlets so it becomes extra sticky and that coating sticks on. So I'm gonna throw it in there for a minute and then get everything ready for the fryer. So I've got some oil preheating on the stove. I just have some olive oil. You can use whatever oil you want. I'm gonna bring my bread over because it's been sitting out all day. So to revive it, warm it up, I just wanna not cut it yet. I'm gonna throw it into like a 375 degree oven, make it feel like it's fresh baked, and then I can make the sandwich from there. We won't need to toast it at all. The inside will be like nice and fluffy and beautiful. To tell if oil is ready to fry, just drop a wooden utensil into the oil, and if bubbles form around the outside, you're ready to go. Toss that bread into the oven, get that warmed up, and then start frying the cutlets. I like to flip the cutlets kind of often, make sure they brown evenly. Any pale spots, I'll splash a little oil on them. As you can see, there was a little bit of a, a bubble that formed, and that's usually a sign that the oil is a little too hot. So just knock it down, and the cutlets should fry normally. And then just go through and fry the rest of the cutlets. That's a beautiful eggplant cutlet. If you didn't know any better, you would think it's a chicken cutlet. It's a beautiful way for a meat eater to eat vegetarian and kind of fool yourself. So this is the roundup. We've got our cutlets, we've got our peppers, we've got our sauce or our balsamic vinaigrette. We've got some nice arugula here and some burrata, which is gonna add another layer of that creaminess and indulgence. We have a nice warm, see it's nice and soft now. It's kind of like brought back to life. Now this is the part where you have to think. How do I want to assemble this sandwich in a way that is going to result in the best sandwich? I don't have a clear idea right now. I'm going to sort of feel it out. And I'll let you know at the end if I would have done it any different. I like to snip off the end of the roll and then try and cut it about the length of the eggplant cutlets. Then split that roll in half. And then first we're gonna go with the burrata. On top of that burrata, we're gonna drizzle a little bit of that balsamic vinaigrette, a little bit of salt. Then we're gonna put a little bit of that arugula, not too much, just enough. A good sandwich is all about proportion. A little bit more of the balsamic on top of that. Then we're gonna go with the cutlets. I kind of wish I went with one cutlet, but if you like a big sandwich, go with two. But bigger isn't always better, in my opinion, when it comes to sandwiches. But if you wanna go big, you do you. Next, we're gonna add the peppers, just the right amount of peppers, not too much. And then we're gonna put a little bit of that balsamic on the top bun and then close it up. Carefully slice her open in a sawing motion with a serrated knife, and look at that. Forget about it. I get the crunch from the eggplant, flavor from the balsamic vinegar, creaminess from the burrata, pepperiness from the arugula, and those roasted red peppers are just like a beautiful condiment. 
I mean, this is the type of sandwich you're gonna get at a high-end sandwich shop. It's all vegetables, it's a beautiful thing. There you have it, a beautiful fried eggplant hero. Now I hope you take that and you sort of make it your own sandwich. Maybe you want a pickled pepper in there instead of a marinated pepper. It's just kind of a basis for an Italian fried eggplant sandwich that you could go in any number of ways. So thank you all so much. Hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. A lot of you aren't getting notified of my videos, so I can see it in my analytics, I know. So go click it right down there. I know you haven't clicked it yet. Thank you so much to all my patrons scrolling up on the screen right now. If you wanna become a patron, there's a link down in the description and on the screen as well. Love you all. Thank you so much for the support. That's all that I have today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself.